Hey, what's up? This is Abel Tesfe here. It's time to talk about a few things that I picked up recently. It's FW18, which means that loads of brands are starting to bring in their new collections and new seasons of stuff. So it's very much an exciting time. I've got a bunch of things here with a vague techwear direction, some of them at the more affordable end of the scale, some very much at the luxury end of the scale, because sometimes you just gotta mix things up. So let's have a look at exactly what those things are. Number one, first thing is some new Stone Island shadow project. Stone Island has always been a brand interested in material innovations and doing that kind of side of things a little bit differently and Shadow Project specifically has been designed over the last 10 years as a collaboration with Errolson Hugh of acronym fame so there's very much a relationship with this collection and techwear. To celebrate that 10th anniversary they have brought out some graphic tees in a whole bunch of different colors and in a move surprising probably absolutely no one, I happen to pick up the black one. On the front, there's this very simple, futuristic geometric pattern and the the 10th anniversary logo there. Kind of reminds me of like a wipeout power up or something, which I quite like. On the back is a way bigger graphic. It's got this hexagon. It's got some really intricate, detailed little slashes and marks going across it. So there's a lot going on on the back here. And then right down the bottom, there's this cut off Stone Island logo and another 10th anniversary thing. So there's quite a lot going on graphically about this t-shirt. I like the coloring, keeping it with that silvery kind of look. And there's a few other bits on this tee as well, like a Shadow Project logo on one arm and there's a 10th anniversary logo on the other. This tee has a slim fit. I bought this in a large, which is the size that I'd normally buy. And it's a little bit slim in the chest and a little bit extended. It might just be because I've lost a few pounds in the last couple of months, but I think this fits pretty well overall. It's a nice little size. The material the material is quite thin, but it's also very soft and very comfy. It means that you could both wear this in summer because it's not gonna make you too hot. And in winter as well, you'll find this very easy to layer under other things because it's not gonna bulk up an outfit too much. The downside of this t-shirt, and it is a fairly major one, is the price. This came out retail at 165 pounds or $200, which for a graphic tee, even one that is a limited 10th anniversary Stone Island Shadow Project one, is fairly outrageous. Although I do really like the graphic, I would struggle to recommend this to people on that retail price alone. You've got to be a real Stone Island Shadow Project fan and really want to celebrate that 10th anniversary to want to pick this up at full price. If you're really desperate to flex the Shadow Project, but you don't have the cash to buy something with the black badge, then this is probably your best option. But for a lot of people, it's going to be one of those things that you keep an eye on. And if it hits the sales, if that retail price starts to come down, then maybe you consider picking it up. I bought one other piece from Stone Island Shadow Project, which is this black crew neck here. It's pretty much plain all over. It has the obligatory black Stone Island Shadow Project badge on and a few other details as well. You'll find some concealed zipped pockets. On the front, there's this little pocket. It's actually quite big, but the opening is really small, so it's not the most practical thing in the world, but it does give a little bit of visual interest to the front. You'll also notice some visible seams running across quite a few different parts of this jumper, which again, make it look a little bit more interesting and help give it that signature Shadow Project kind of style. This fits a little bit looser than the T does, although the cuffs are quite strong, which pulls it in around the wrists and around your hips as well. It's a slightly different cut to a standard jumper. It's quite a heavy weight as well, although it's not fleece lined. So it's got a nice bit of warmth to it without being like super heavy or anything, but it certainly feels like the material is of a very nice quality. As it should be, because again, that retail price is quite high. This comes in at 325 pounds, which is around $400. Considering a mainline Stone Island jumper is maybe 180 pounds, you're paying a pretty big premium for those small style touches. And this certainly is isn't as distinctive or as out there as a lot of the Stone Island Shadow Project pieces can be. It is pretty wearable though. I feel like you'll have a lot of opportunities to just chuck this on. And that was the reason that I bought it, to be honest. I wanted a go-to black jumper that I can just wear pretty much all the time. So yeah, the retail price is pretty high, but I think I'll get quite a lot of wear on it. So I was happy to pay the price for that reason. The third thing I picked up from Matches was these Rico and shoes, which are hiding in this box here. Let me get these out. It comes with this suede tote bag. Now, how about that for a premium shoe experience? And the shoe itself is here, the Rick Owens Oblique. This is the first pair of true luxury sneakers that I've ever bought. And these come with an appropriately luxury price tag of 500 pounds, which is 
really pretty high. So I'm not gonna be making a habit of buying stuff like this. This reminds me of a more formal, a more restrained version of the Y3 Kaiwa that we looked at a month or so ago. I think it's really that protruding heel there that does that for me. And of course, some design inspiration, certainly from the older Rick Owens Tech Runner. I normally do dedicated reviews on sneakers, so let me know if you wanna see some more info on that and I will definitely cover them in some more detail. But I just really wanted some black trainers that were a little bit smarter that I can wear in more formal situations, but still have a bit of identity and a bit of personality to them. So I'm hoping that these will achieve exactly that. The next few things are ones that I've been sent, so thank you to these guys. I'm not a massive camo fan, and I'm also not a massive skinny jogger fan. So that's why I love these Yamoro skinny camo joggers. So these come in two different colors. They're obviously not to my taste, but to their credit, they are extremely comfy. So I'll probably make these my go-to lounging around the house video editing pants. These have a little cargo pocket on them, which are quite cute, helps with the military aesthetic that they're obviously going for. And this is secured with a little magnet here. Although unfortunately that magnet seems to be too strong for its own good, because I was absentmindedly fiddling with this a couple of days ago. And over time, if you pull this pocket open using the material, it will actually rip it because the magnets are too strong. So I would be careful with that one. I actually prefer the last joggers Yamoro did, the FLC02. Those ones were um, like a tech fleece kind of material rather than those more stretchy ones. They weren't quite as skin tight. The zips on the pockets were on the outside. It had a cool little phone pocket as well. Um, so yeah, those ones are actually quite good. So I'll put a link to those ones in the description as well if you wanna have a look at those. And lastly, a trio of things from Alpha Matif. There's a bag, a belt, and a little armband as well. The belt is this one here. It's very, very similar to one that you might have seen uh, a month or two back in a video, but this one has a gold logo instead of a white one. So it gives a nice little extra option. If I wear something that's got a little bit of color in it, then that could be a nice little accent as opposed to going for the white one. So that's pretty cool. The armband falls much more into that tactical direction. It's this little thing here. It's not really an area that I've experimented with that much. This thing in itself is obviously not particularly practical just because of how small this pocket is. You could carry some change in there if you're really desperate to carry or like some USB sticks or something, I don't know. But I think combined with other things that have this kind of aesthetic, you know, those modular bags, molly webbing, holsters, that kind of stuff. You get all that going, you add this armband in as well, and then you've got a really cool streetwear inspired, more military, more tactical kind of fit. So that's probably something that I'll mess about with and experiment with a bit more in the future. The bag though, I think is very nice and possibly one of my favorite Alpha Matif things yet. It's this little thing here. And it has this very, very square shape thanks to this plastic insert, which is on the inside here. And that means that even when it's empty, it has a lot of structure to it and it does keep this form very nicely. Surprisingly spacious as well. Although it's not that big, you can get a small SLR in here. There's a little zipped extra pocket on the front. There's an unzipped pouchy thing on the back also. I think this will go pretty nicely in a whole bunch of different techwear fits. So I'm sure I'll get some decent use out of this if I just wanna go out for a day, carry a few bits, but nothing too over the top. And that's it on my little pickup. So if you wanna see some more on this stuff and how it fits and how you might style it, then keep an eye on my Instagram. I'll probably do some photos, including all of this stuff at some point in the future. I've not done a pickup video before, so let me know if you enjoyed this one. And if you've seen anything cool come out this season for FW18, then let me know down there in the comments, is there something that I should be picking up that I've missed out on in this one. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like and that's everything. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Shout out to Alex. I'm definitely feeling the BBS vibes there as well. It's not really a brand that I've looked at very much on this channel, mostly because as you say, it's a very, very luxury brand, very premium pricing but they've got a lot of cool stuff, so they're worth checking out. And to Big Boy Jog, honestly, I'm surprised that this is the worst roast so far that I've got about this hair because this is way too long, it looks awful. If you enjoyed this video, you wanna catch some more, then please do hit those little videos up there and you can see those. And if you wanna catch those future ones as soon as they come out, then definitely consider subscribing. There's gonna be a little button going up there as well.